Okay, if you're coming from Page, the uh, turn onto the road for the way is a hairpin turn that really just sneaks up on you. And there's a bunch of people, oh my God, down here. Uh, okay, so yay, this is exciting. There's a pothole. And supposedly they resurfaced the road. So now I've got about eight miles on this road. There's a camper van down there. I think people are also waiting to see if everyone has like an extra ticket. And I only have one for the way. Sorry, this bugs all over my window. I only have one ticket because I figured it'd be easier to get the permit with one than trying to get, because if you think about it, here's the thing. There's only 12 that are pre, uh, pre permits on recreation.gov. So if you want five tickets, you're not going to get your permit. If you do, you're very, very lucky. But for the most part, like I just went with one person. <laughs> and so uh, anyway, impossible when wet. It is the best day. I have lucked out like almost every time I've been somewhere, except for Kings Canyon, I have lucked out with impeccable weather. I could probably, no, I don't want to stay here tonight because I'll be done with this in a few hours. Then I'm going to go to Buckskin Gulch, which is also down here. And then I'm going to go do the toadstools anyway, because um, because I'm, it's on the way back to, uh, to Page. And then I'll go stay in the same place tonight. All vehicles and bicycles must stay on the roads. Okay. All right, so this is the, the road. It is uh, Prius worthy, they said, or Nissan Altima. Little washboardy. Oh, but not terrible, as long as that noise doesn't happen. Okay, so I'll see you in about 10 miles. Okay, this road is fun. It's not too treacherous, but I am going about 10 or 15 miles an hour. Here's Buckskin Gulch. So the trailhead is right over there, which is great. So I'll do that on the way back. Um, it's going to take me another 10, 15 minutes to get another four miles um, straight ahead to uh, the wave. And then when I come back, and I could also just, you know, if I wanted to, if I had my bike on the back, I could have just parked here or parked at the other two or three um, parking lots on the way and rode my bike in. The road isn't bad to ride on, actually. This is no different than riding the trails that I ride. Um, but of course, if it's raining, this is impossible. So I'm going to keep going, but I'll come back and do... Do. I'll come back and hike Buckskin Gulch as well. Um, I don't think I downloaded the map, but I'll take a look on all trails. And then, yeah, and the, well, I've downloaded the map for the wave, but not the one for this one over here, but it's fine. And then, yeah, um, <laughs> my, my beads, I gotta get rid of these. They're making noise all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. There's people behind me, but they're gonna have to wait because I'm in a two wheel drive. Right, so here's the great turnout. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> a couple people. Some people may not come until later in the day because uh, your permit is good from midnight 01 until 11.59. So you have to put your pink permit in the window and then they give you a little piece of wire, which is funny because it's the wire pass trail, a little piece of wire to attach your um, permit also to your backpack. And somebody on the Facebook page said that they have cameras set up. I'm like, I'll look for the blinking rock with a little, you know, a little blinking red light. Uh, the ranger yesterday said, no, they don't have little rocks with cameras, <laughs> um, but they do have people out on the trail uh, throughout the day. So they have toilets. There's a little uh, place to check in and they will check passes. Um, so yeah, if I see a drone following me, I'll be like, no, I'm legit. So I just use a hair tie, cut it so I could tie it. And there she is. So the sun's coming in from there. It should hit me over here, so that's fine. Okay, so yeah, okay, apart from the uh, Texans going a thousand miles an hour, don't, oh, here's the thing, don't drive like more than 20 miles an hour down these roads because you kick up dust and rocks and I already got a rock chip on my window. So just be mindful of other drivers that when you're barreling down, you know, you could damage their vehicle. Um, plus, you know, it's not wise to go that fast because there's animals and things. Okay, all right, let's get going. So yeah, let's do the wave. Okay, this is cool. And then uh, I feel like the wave will be like, meh, and then Buckskin Gulch will be like, yay. So yeah, now I'll do, uh, yeah, I'll do the wave. And then um, there should be, should be a ranger. Maybe the guy from the visitor center. He said he might be out here as well. So, okay, well, bye Prudence. Uh, hopefully you'll get some sun because I'm out of power. Then we have the obnoxious Mad Max people coming over here, whatever they're doing. Okay, all right, let's do this. I got my Strava going and let's go hike. Hopefully I won't be near the loud group. You can only really be loud when you're in bear country. That's just my rule. Anyway, okay, 
beautiful, gorgeous day could not be better. Oh, this is great. Okay, wire pass. Please hike in wash. So first of all, you hike quite a bit of a way through the wash and all trails will have you start at different places. I guess it changes as it gets washed out. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know if it's marked, but yeah, there's another entry right there. Um, but yeah, you just do this for a little bit. Um, and that's it. <laughs> Nothing more to report for right now. All right, I'm off. I've got the uh, hiking snots already. <laughs> oh, you can see my, look at how trippy that is. You see my camera on me. You see me holding my camera and there's me. Anyway, okay, so yeah, I don't know. It's only three miles up, three miles back. Um, but then there's other stuff you can like go to up at the top. And the people behind me were like, we're going slow. I was like, oh, you don't wanna be, you don't wanna be rescued today. Yeah, they're like, you know, we're not going very deep. Anyway, okay, so I'm just gonna walk. Uh, beautiful, cold, it's cold, it's about 50 degrees, but the sun is pretty warm. That's why I've got my sun hat on. That's why you can't see my eyes. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so yeah, I'll let you know. Oh, there we are, there's me. Yeah, see, proof of life. <laughs> I am alive. <laughs> so, this is great. I feel like it's overhyped though. You know, I get that only like 64 people get to do this a day. Um, you know, and if you win the lottery, you win the lottery. But I've been to so many hikes, but this is pretty amazing. It is pretty phenomenal. If you want to do a baby wave, you can go to um, Valley of the Fire outside of Vegas. They have the fire wave, which is like the Fisher Price version. It's pretty good. Um, if you want to go to other wavy things, um, there's plenty of stuff to do in the Grand Escalante Staircase. Uh, natural area, Glen Canyon natural area all around the area here. Um, Bus Buckskin Gulch. You can hike from here 11 miles to where I came in, four miles away on the road. You can do the 11 mile hike out and back, um, which I'm not going to do. I'm just going to hike from that trailhead a little bit in, a little bit out after I'm done with this. Um, and then, you know, there's plenty of other things to do. There's lots of toadstools. Um, there's uh, lots of slot canyons. Um, some of the stuff like peekaboo, you need a four wheel drive. It's very sandy. So the uh, visitor center guy yesterday told me that, you know, what I should and should not do with the van. So this road wasn't too bad. I was going about 10 miles an hour. It did take me about half an hour to get down there, um, which is fine. You know, half an hour to go eight miles, uh, just like being in Houston <laughs> during rush hour traffic. Anyway, ooh, got bit by something. Okay, so let me keep going. I am uh, trying to catch my breath because I've got the snots and it's cold and I just got started. My arm is hurting and I didn't bring my little tripod so I'm gonna have to get someone to take my photo. Or I have to get a rock, you know, get one of these rocks to prop it up on, you know, do like the um, back of my head millennial Instagram pose. Yeah. Okay, this is gorgeous. What a day. How lucky am I? Yay me. <laughs> I'll try to be like me. No, I'm just kidding. Don't be like me. You'll fall over your face every day. <laughs> so at least once a day, I trip over my face. Okay. I have to check that my permit is still on my backpack by looking at my shadow. So if that little dangly thing is not dangling, then I'm not authorized to be here. So about 0.6 miles in, be careful. Do not continue on the wash. Look for this little brown sign over here. Coyote Buttes North Special Management Area. Um, you have to, you have to turn. If you keep going this way, you'll never get to the wave. You will end up back in Kanab. So just be careful. It's 0.6 miles. There's a tree right here and there's a pathway that goes up. So look to your right the whole time you're hiking up this road to make sure you don't miss this sign and somebody left their hat. It's a pretty steep climb. So just be careful. These rocks are kind of wobbly. By the way, I'm the only one on the trail. It says right here on the waypoint on all trails, it says view of the saddle. And I don't know what the saddle is. I don't think it's that rock thing in the middle. View of the saddle. So just to let you know, after the first mile, you're hiking in sand pretty much the rest of the way until you get to the wave. More sandy stuff. Yeah, when this rains, this is impossible. I mean, I could not imagine trying to navigate your way through this. Okay, Coyote, Buttes North, permit required beyond this point. So yeah, I think the Buckskin Gulch, I think the hike goes that way, or it goes the way that when I told you like not to go on the wash, you know, a mile back, um, I think that's where you pick up that trail from if you want to do the full 11 miles. So now back through the sand, <laughs> definitely a good workout. I've got my 
my grippy shoes and my waterproof shoes. Oh, look, it's a mini wave. I'm just kidding. Anyway, and this is all made by water. So that's why when it's, you know, rains, you don't want to be out here. Okay, follow the footprints for a very, uh, you know, um, exclusive, not heavily trafficked trail. There are 17 billion footprints. All I see are footprints, more than I see on heavily trafficked trails when you, you, know, you don't need a permit, where there's more than you know, 60 people a day allowed. Okay, 1.3 miles in, this is where you start to climb. So now we just go up and I'm following all trails, which just takes you to the waypoints, but yay, up we go. It doesn't look anything like Instagram. What a piece of crap. No, I'm just kidding. It's very beautiful. Hey, there's a picture. So yeah, now the rest of the hike is just kind of scrambling. So I can see why people get lost. There is a marker, but I would follow all trails. I don't know if you can see. Nope, anyway. Uh, and stay high up just so you don't have to keep scrambling back up again. And just, yeah, just follow the arrow. I'm literally the only one. So the end of the world happens. I know where I'm going to be. No one's going to find me. This is fantastic. Okay. You have to watch because even if you think you're going in a straight line, you're actually not. You're going to end up way to the left or the right. So I would suggest Staying to the right as much as you can um, because you will see these markers eventually and I guess you have to stay pretty high up like I said. If you get too far down in the valley, you're way the wrong way. Okay, that's Plateau Rock. So I have probably about another mile to go. I saw one other hiker. Yay, humans. <laughs> I tell you something, you do have to be in relatively good shape to do this hike. You are hiking on an incline sideways pretty much the entire time. And you do need grippy shoes and you are going up a lot of scrambles. Um, but the other thing too is that um, it's very, very easy to twist an ankle. There's people that basically broke ankles on this thing. So just be careful when you're hiking along the, uh, like along the slopes, um, make sure you don't like, you know, put your uh, ankle a funny way. So anyway, there's the plateau rock right there. The other hiker is a green permit. I think that's the same day permit, not like the fancy pink permit, which is the, um, you know, <laughs> the royalty when it comes to getting permits. So haha, -ha, I have a pink permit, you have a green permit. I'm just kidding, I'm not like one of those people. I could be if I want to be ornery. Anyway, okay, so we'll keep going back onto the sandy bit. This is great. It doesn't look like Instagram though. I'm gonna have to like filter the hell out of my photos for it to look like what I think it's supposed to look like. You know, when you get here and it's like Instagram versus reality. So this is the part where the ranger said to stay high. So the other hike is down in the sand and you need to stay high up on here, which is where all trails is gonna take you and just, you know, kind of bypass all that sandy bit down there, plus a better view. The hiker is following me now. I'm like, I'm not the voice of reason. Don't follow me. I'm just trying to look for the bathroom. And now I'm crossing the Utah-Arizona border again for the 14th time in two days. Yesterday, I think I crossed into Utah and Arizona, I think a total of eight times each, just going back and forth across the border. This morning, I crossed the border twice, went to the gas station from my BLM, turned around and went back to the road to go this way. And now I'm back in Utah. So goodbye, Arizona. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I'm about an hour in, about three miles. Um, it is a dry hike, so I'm gonna drink some water in a little bit. And yeah, so back on the sand, and I just go this way, and I should get up to the, uh, the wave is at the end. None of this is the wave. So if you're like, oh, I just wanna walk in and take a quick look and take a photo and leave. No, you gotta go four miles. <laughs> you gotta hike the whole way, just like everyone else. So. Just beware that it's not like, you know, a petroglyphs thing where you park and you take photos and leave. No, you gotta, you gotta hike all the way up there. I think you have to go over those, uh, those mountains. I see other hikers over there. So, okay, so, so far I've seen three people. A couple over there and then the uh, person behind me. Now I start my climb up here. So there's all these footprints in the sand. Just walk over here on the rock, it's a lot easier. 
and you're going to go up and start climbing up through. Once you get over those, uh, those mounds, you'll be in the actual wave and then you can just kind of run around and explore. So yeah, not very far, probably about, I don't know, another couple hundred feet. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the wave. <laughs> Here's the beauty and then here's the uh, jerks that have to set up all their stuff. Oh my god, it's like Instagram land. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I'm just enjoying the nature, but yeah, these guys have the whole like National Geographic setup going on down there. You know, you can just get the picture off the internet. <laughs> so, all right, let's go look at some other stuff up here. Let's go walk around. This is fine. It's all right. I mean, obviously, you know, the crew down there. <laughs> so this is why you should never be these guys. So what if somebody wanted to like go up here and take a photo of their family down there, but they can't because these guys have all the cameras set up. So I asked the guy in the blue if he would move his equipment so that people can take pictures from up here. And he said, no. <laughs> He said, oh, it's going to take a long time to move it. I said, well, maybe you shouldn't set up 100,000 tripods in the place where people want to take photos. Because, you know, it's not like people try their whole life to get a permit. <laughs> I don't know. This is just, that's just, that's bullshit. That's inconsiderate and disappointing. And they're taking the same 50 photos over and over again. And they're not the professional photographers. I don't even know if there would be one up here. But it's just like, dude, like if somebody, this is a great shot with the exception of the fact that I've got a flamingo attached to a tripod and a guy in a blue jacket. And then some other hikers over there eating lunch or breakfast. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. I'll go find another part of the wave that's not inundated with obnoxious photographers. But yeah, I'll get my picture on the way back. Anyway, the sun, yeah, the sun's in the right place. Yeah, if the sun was over there, it'd be, you know, shadowy. But yeah, come in the morning then, I guess, you know, for the uh, solstice, whatever the sun is doing. Okay, now the sun's back with us. The sun was gone during the eclipse. Oh, I gotta climb up here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go up here and just keep going a little bit further up. I guess most people just stop there. But yeah, it looks a lot bigger than it is. <laughs> like that part is where everybody takes their photo and I think they turn around and go back. But yeah, it is a trek to get up here. And, but anyway, so I'm gonna keep going. I don't think there's anyone else up here. I only counted six people now so that's about as many cars were in the parking lot without people if I do my math okay up we go Ooh. so up here you have the second wave the dune and a melody arch so most people don't go this far in probably I don't know another mile or two um, I think I'll go to the second wave I don't think I'll keep going to Melody Arch. Um, that's fine. So yeah, and then I'll head back. So I've already been hiking over an hour and I know it's gonna start getting busy. Um, so I do. I would like my money shot, but not with somebody's, you know, camera equipment. It's just like, you wanna set your camera equipment up all day there? Oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, but I'll say, I said something to him. I said, that is horrible. <laughs> that is so rude, you know? It's like, can you move out of the way? At least other people can have a shot so they can, you know, show that they were here. I hate it when people think they own the place. Like, this is for everybody. Like, you set up your whole, you know, movie crew. And by the way, if they're doing professional photography, they have to have a permit. So, not for, like, me. I'm not monetized. I don't make any money off this. Um, but if they do sell their photos, they have to have a permit for public land. Okay, that's the second wave down there. That's a different trail, it goes all the way over there. Okay, I'm gonna head back. Yeah, I guess the whole thing of the wave is just that little tiny bit for the photo shot. I understand the permit system, like, you know, to keep it low capacity and all of that. I can tell you right now, if you don't have all trails, you can get lost out here very, very easily. Um, so I can understand not opening it to the mass public. But the way that it is overhyped, overrated, the amount of disappointment that people have when they don't get a permit. 
I mean, I work with people that have trauma, PTSD, domestic violence survivors. The last thing I want is for somebody to think they're going to be healing in nature and then just like get punched in the kneecap with disappointment, you know, because they can't go or, you know, they have to, you know, apply and apply and apply. And it's like $9 every time you apply to the lottery. So that said, this is beautiful. The whole of Utah is absolutely beautiful, but all that stuff that's happening down there at the actual wave wave, like that, those, <laughs> that's not cool. Like, don't be those people. Okay. That's my PSA. Don't be those jerks. Because I asked him, I said, sir, what if other people want to stand up on this rock and take a photo of their family and stuff? Can you move everything? He goes, well, it's going to take a really long time to move stuff. I said, good, start moving it now. <laughs> you can start now. So by the time I get back there and the other people on the hike, you know, get up there, because it's like a over an hour hike. I was going pretty fast, but you know, it's four or five miles to get up here and you get here and you can't even, you know, take a photo because, you know, Mr. National Geographic's got, you know, all this stuff there. That stuff pisses me off. And um, you know, I'll ask someone to take my photo, but I'm not going to bring a thousand tons of camera equipment. And like I said, if they're doing professional photography and they're selling the photos, that kind of thing, then they, they have to get a filming permit. So, um, that said, you know, I think the system to get the permit, I think everything's fine, whatever. I mean, you know, I understand that only a few people get to go every day, but there is that sense of elitism and, um, exclusion. And I don't think the outdoors should be elitist or exclusionary. Um, that's not why I, I do what I do. I mean, I have Hike Bike Alike, which I started to make the world more accessible. You know, adventure accessibility for all is our motto, or my motto, because I'm the only employee. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, that's my whole purpose is to make it more accessible and not to have nature be, you know, defeating. I mean, yeah, you could try to climb a mountain and not make it, but like, I mean, like, somebody wants to go heal in nature, they had a bad day at home, they're in a domestically violent situation, or, you know, they're newly disabled, and they want to go for a walk, they want to kind of get, you know, some peace of mind. And then they can't because there's a barrier. And that barrier is that, you know, they're, they're, that nature is inaccessible for whatever reason, they're priced out of it. Um, there's no accessibility guide. Um, the uh, people walking their dogs don't have dogs on leashes. The rangers don't know anything that they're talking about. You know, it's there's a lot of barriers that need to be overcome to make places like this accessible. So I'm glad that there's no one up here. <laughs> um, but down there in like little crowded world with the guys with the cameras that are not moving, I mean, how many pictures do you need to take? They took all their photos. Are they just going to wait all day until the sunset? I mean, that's great. We'll move out the way so everyone else coming up can get their picture because that's just that's just rude. So I'm going to walk back. I'm going to try to get someone to take my photo um, quickly or I'll do a selfie or a self timer. Take a quick snap and go. So I'm out of everybody's way. And then I'm going to hike all the way back and go do Buckskin Gulch. And if I have time, I'll do toadstools. It's only like 10 a.m. So that was great. So yeah, I'm not going to go any further. This is where I would be going. I'm not going to go up there. I'm just going to go back that way. Um, yeah, gorgeous, beautiful day. Um, rude, arrogant people. <laughs> so welcome to America. Um, but that said, grateful that I got my permit. Um, I think it's overhyped. I think it's overhyped and people that try six, seven times to get a permit just so they can say they did it. And to be honest, the only bit of the wave is just that tiny little bit back there. Um, the rest of it just looks like this. So um, Okay, thank you, Instagram, for your false reality. <laughs> All right, it's fine. I mean, you know, I got to do it. I can check it off. Um, but there's so many, oh my God, there's so many free natural areas all around this area. Glen Canyon, Vermilion Cliffs, which is where I'm at right now, because you actually hike into Vermilion Cliffs. Grand Staircase Escalante, it is stunning. The whole of like south, southeastern Utah is beautiful. Southwestern Utah, like Bryce, Zion, all that gorgeous like St. George I'm gonna go back there and do some more hikes but this area is just like blows my mind it's like the surface of Mars so you got this guy it's like Red Bull can you please make drinks <laughs> so that is so funny that's like one of those paid tours. I need to do a tour tomorrow. I've got to do something. I've got the whole day with nothing to do. And that guy just crashed. I don't know. <laughs> it's like the joke on Red Bull Instagram. It's like Red Bull used to make drinks. Now they just do crazy shit. Okay, so this is where you get 5G if you have T-Mobile. You can just stand in there. Is he going to go back up? There he is. Oh, that's too funny. 
That looks fun and terrifying at the same time. It's not even windy. That is bold. That is like, I don't even need insurance because no insurance would cover me for that. That's fun. See, I'd rather have someone do that than stand and block the whole thing. Everybody's like, oh, I've got to take a picture of a shadow. That's great. No one cares about your photography, sir. Okay, I'm heading back now. I was up here, sitting here for like 30 minutes, had 5G, and all these, uh, probably about 10 or 15 other hikers went by, and I was telling them like, there's a douchebag up there with his cameras, and the general consensus is that I'm not the Karen, I'm the right person in this conversation. So yeah, I mean, I get it. Like, you know, you want to do micro adjustments on your camera, you want to set up your Hasselblad, you want to have all this stuff, you know, ready to go for the shadow. But not only can you just get that off the internet, <laughs> there's no other people in his photo. It's just him taking a picture of the rocks. It'd be different if it's like your family. But the other thing is that there's like, you know, 63 other people that are here today, <laughs> maybe, you know, that, you know, it took a really long time for some people to get here. And that's just common courtesy. And if you want to do professional photography, then go ahead and get a permit and then get permission to come here when you're not bothering anybody else. That, you know, they can actually do that. I mean, I worked in the movie industry for a number of years and we had to get permits all the time to shut places down so we could film. You know, it's like, great. Okay, then do that. Pay the money to do that. So, it's fine. I got my shot, you know. I had one guy help me. I was like, okay, don't get any, don't get this photographer's shadow in my in my shot so we had to kind of finagle our way to make sure they got my shot but anyway all right let's go hike back an hour should be pretty easy um yeah so i'm you know as i said overhyped it is fun i mean i think it's more fun when the more more people are here because we're all kind of like oh my god i finally made it like yay pat on the back um but to be honest all the hype you know i mean i planned my entire six week trip around this day um it's not like io real io real was fantastical like getting the the seaplane and the um what is it the seaplane and the uh, cabin in the middle of july last year and that was fantastic amazing first time on a seaplane this one though i mean i hike every single day pretty much when i'm in the van so um yeah i mean it's a good experience i'm glad i went glad i got a photo but to be honest it is overhyped and i think um i don't agree with the um the way that it makes people disappointed i don't agree in you know, creating something that, that brings disappointment and defeat <laughs> to people, um, you know, and that people just get real discouraged. Like, oh, I tried eight times to get half dome or I tried eight times to get, you know, the wave or whatever. And I just, I don't like bullying. It's kind of like a, a weird, like parasocial bullying almost, you know, where just people are like, oh, I really wish I could go, but you know, I paid for it, paid the lottery ticket and I didn't get to go. So, cause when you get here, it's technically free. <laughs> You know, there's no charge to get in. You just have to win the lottery. So, I don't know. I want I want everyone to... Oh, shit, slipping. I want everyone to enjoy the outdoors. <laughs> slipping down. Holy crap. Okay, let me get down here. I want everybody to enjoy the outdoors. Um, and I want it accessible, but I also want it not to be ruined by too many people. So it's kind of like a catch-22. I mean, I went to the Great Wall of China in uh, 20 or 2001. And we went to uh, Simitai, so there was nobody there. And there was only like six of us in our group. And there were two people that were camping. You actually camp and stay on the Great Wall, like in the little uh, outposts, like the little uh, guard posts. Um, but then if you go to uh, the big one, um, whatever the big, the main one is, where they've got the Chick-fil-A, uh, the Chick they've got the um, Kentucky Fried Chicken, like built into the wall and like David Blaine, no, it wasn't David Blaine, it was... David Copperfield went through it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, if you do that, it's uh, it's really, um, you know, like you get a thousand million people and you're just getting crushed to death by crowds. But I lucked out and there was only a couple of us and we had the whole day <laughs> to spend there by ourselves on the Great Wall of China. So anyway, it's kind of hard. It's like, I want everyone to enjoy the world. I've seen a heck of a lot of it. I've been to half the, half the countries on the planet. Uh, 51, 52 national parks, you know, 89 Texas state parks, you know, all the natural areas and everything in between. Um, but I also don't want it to get ruined by people. So be good humans and be courteous. And it doesn't take much to move two seconds over for someone and then go back and get your money shot. But dude, and also he didn't have a permit. The guy needs a permit. So he's wrong from all angles. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to hike back. I'll see you later.
Yeah. Okay, that woman up there, she just came by to point out that there's mountain goats on the top of those two little mounds. I could hear them. There's some other people there. Um, but yeah, so she's checking permits. And then I told her about the douchebag uh, photographer guy. She's like, oh, you know, I'm going to go talk to him and I'm going to have him removed. I was like, good, have him removed before he gets his shadow picture. <laughs> it's like, plus I told her, and I had it on camera, I filmed him. I don't know if I'll put it in the video, but um, I did film him admitting that he didn't have a commercial filming permit. So um, yeah, if you've got that much elaborate equipment, you need to have some sort of, uh, you know, permit or something. There's other humans. Okay, let me go back. I've got about two miles to go and then I'll be back at the van. Then I'll head to Box King Gulch. It's getting very hot right now. And, um, and then I'll go do that hike. All right, I'm back at the uh, the wash, uh, about a mile from the um, trailhead. That was easy, a lot easier going back uh, than it was going out. Um, but yeah, so now I'm just going to hike back, uh, have a quick bite to eat and go up to Buckskin Gulch, um, which you'll see on another episode. I'll put on a different one. And I need to use a restroom. <laughs> so this was great, apart from the douchebag with the camera. Um, but yeah, it wasn't really that crowded until I was leaving. Um, but I'll tell you, it's four hours. It's a four, and I, you know, I stopped for a little bit to sit where I had the 5G, but I'll tell you right now, it is, it is a long dry hike. So I would recommend bringing at least a liter of water, if not more, and bring a snack to have at the top um, because you are hiking in, you know, dry heat with a lot of sand. So it does kind of kick up and make it a little bit drier, but yeah, I mean, it was a good hike. I'm still, I think, overrated, <laughs> but I do appreciate, you know, being able to do this. I'm glad I got a permit on the first try. I'm glad I got to do all the things before the way for the last two and a half weeks, three weeks, and then for the next uh, month after this. So yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's worth it. I mean, if you do get a permit, but um, I wouldn't beat yourself up if you don't. I think, you know, you can live without coming to the wave. <laughs> Definitely check out what's around the area. I highly recommend Vermilion Cliffs and uh, Grand Staircase Escalante and uh, the other stuff that they have. So yeah, between Canab and Page, it's just an outdoor playground and it's so beautiful. And hopefully, you know, it's not gonna get too hot in the next couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, so, okay, well, thank you. I'm now just gonna walk back and uh, go hydrate myself. It's me again. I just saw another couple starting their hike and I'm right near the parking lot and they didn't have any water bags or anything. I said, are you going to the way? They said, yeah. I said, it's a four hour round trip. And they're like, what? I said, four hours <laughs> and it's noon, middle of the day. So they continued on. I do hope, I do hope they don't have any issues, but they're wearing all black. And uh, mind you, I'm wearing dark colors, but all black, um, no hats, no water, no bags, nothing. And I was like, dude, you are gonna be in trouble. I am so happy to be home. It is busy, busy. Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway, okay. Well, hopefully I've got some more juice on my power bank. So yeah, I'm gonna go check out the trail for Buckskin Gulch, can't even speak. Um, if it's like nearby the trailhead, I'll go to the Slot Canyon, but I'm not gonna do another through hike where it's like 11 miles to get to the thing I wanna look at. Okay, what's this over here? This is a tour, adventure tour. Yeah, the Mad Max people left already. I don't know where they went. And there's no one over here. There's the volunteer cars and there's nobody in there. Okay, cool, all right. 